Hello, and welcome to my very first guide. I'm Theo, I'm a high legend player with multiple top 100 finishes, including a top 15 finish on EU last month. With this guide, I want to tell you about my Reno Lock list and how to play it in less than 20 minutes. Since this is my first video, any feedback would be appreciated. I've chosen Reno Lock for this guide since it is one of my favorite decks in the meta due to its complexity. Reno Lock has helped a lot of players to reach the high legend ranks myself included, when I reached top 100 legend. The deck list I'll be mainly covering will be the Reno Lock list with the combo, which is Leroy with Power Overwhelming plus Face of Manipulator for a total of 20 damage. Now the non-combo list has lately become more popular due to better matchups against aggro and the decline in Reno Lock players, where the combo shines the most. However, do we choose not to play with the combo? Most of this guide still applies to the non-combo deck. So, why would you want to play this deck? First of all, it is a difficult deck to play optimally, due to having several options and combos available most of the turns. Very often your choices are meaningful, making it also a very rewarding deck. As you will see later in this guide, you can make a lot of different choices in your card selection, all of them with their own up and downside, letting you choose which matchups you want to improve. If you choose not to run the combo, you have even more flexibility to attack cards to your deck. And lastly, most matchups are very different from each other. This means that if you don't face the same deck every time, your games will be very diverse and don't get boring by having the same general strategy every game. Uh, this guide will cover the following topics. First of all, I will cover the deck list. Now, I won't just show you my deck list, but also the thought process behind it and what you can change yourself. I will talk about the core of the deck, the cards that you basically always want to play, and the tech cards, which you can add to the core list depending on what matchups you want to improve or what you prefer. After that, I will discuss the most common matchups for the deck on the ladder. I will go over which cards you want to keep in the mulligan for these matchups, and will also cover the general game plan against these decks and what you want to focus on during the game. And lastly, I will give you some general gameplay tips which you could use during your games. The core list you can see here on the left contains the 25 cards I think you almost always want to play in the combo list, making it a good starting point to construct your own deck. Although you have only 5 spots left due to running the combo, the cards you can choose from are very different, making the deck quite flexible. If you want to make this deck even more flexible, you can cut the combo and use more tech cards instead. Tech cards are, depending on the meta, cards that you want to put in your deck to improve certain matchups. There are a lot of different options for Reno Lock, so I'll give you a quick look at the options and in which case you want to run them. First, I'll discuss 4 cards that you only run to one two of, because they are very similar. The first two are Alexstrasza and Lord Jaraxxus, both of which can set your health to 15. You want to run Jaraxxus when you face a lot of slow decks that do not have the ability to handle Jaraxxus, such as Reno Mage. While Alexstrasza is usually better in the other matchups, where the instant body of Alexstrasza compared to Jaraxxus is more important. Another plus of Alexstrasza is that she is less situational and often immediately pressures your opponent. Since there aren't too many slow decks in the meta, and those decks that are slow are still very beatable without Jaraxxus, I've chosen to play Alexstrasza because it helps more in the matchups this deck struggles with and also synergizes better with the combo. The second pair of cards are Faceless Shambler and Defender of Argus, which I feel you only want to run one of in the combo list, since both of them have a very similar role. In my deck list I prefer Faceless Shambler, since this card synergizes better with big minions in the control matchups and it also only requires one card on board to get full value. The following cards are the most used tech cards currently in Reno Lock. Corruption is a card that lets you easily remove minions early, it can sometimes be hard to kill such as Twilight Drake or Totem Golem. Downside is that it is less impressive late game and is only situationally good. Soulfire lets you immediately get rid of dangerous cards early on, such as Frothing Berserker, and it can also help with bursting your opponent unexpectedly. Voidwalker lets you improve your early game against aggro decks, can also help protect minions late game such as Emperor of Thorazen. Sunfury Protector helps you stabilize the against aggressive decks once you gain board control, so you do not lose to weapons or charge minions. Might Control Tech helps versus decks that flood the board, such as Shaman. It can often be used early now due to patches, and it can also synergize with Dirty Red and Bran. Blast Crystal Potion is a 4 mana assassinate, it deals with big threats immediately, but with a big downside early. Late game it has no downsides and is very cheap removal in slower matchups. Spellbreaker is a good card if you face a lot of Sylvanas or other Reno locks. Most decks have a good target, but Spellbreaker can sometimes be slow and clunky in your hand. 
Sylvanas is a card that is very slow when facing aggressive decks, but it shines against midrange and control decks, where it can be very annoying to deal with. Ragnaros the Fire Lord is similar to Sylvanas, in that he is too slow against aggro, but very strong against these slower matchups. It generates both a big body, as well as pressures your opponent immediately. Mountain Giant is a card that some people recently cut due to the amount of aggro decks on the ladder. It is another card that is dead most of the time versus aggro, but an important one versus any slow deck. To fill the last three spots, I've included Might Control Tech, Glass Crystal, and Mountain Giant in my decklist. I've chosen the Might Control Tech because it helps often versus the most common matchup on ladder, Shamans, and it often works well together with Dirty Red. I included Blast Crystal because a card like Flame Wrath Faceless can sometimes be very hard to deal with, and it can also provide a nice tempo swing against control decks. My last inclusion is Mountain Giant. I think this card is too good in the slower matchups to not include, as you will see in the mulligans later on. Matchups and mulligan. The mulligan depends heavily on the matchup, with only Reno Jackson and Kazakas being part of every mulligan. In general, you want to keep two things in mind for the mulligan. First, you want to assume that they are playing the most aggressive or the most common deck of the opponent's class. And second, if you already have a good opening, you can keep cards that you otherwise wouldn't keep, but are decent if you already have the most important cards. Against Shaman, you want to keep Reno, Kazakas, Mistress of Mixtures, Acidic Swamp Boost, Doomsayer, Demon Wrath, and Hellfire. Agro Shaman is a slightly unfavored matchup, against which you want to try to get a hold of the board as soon as possible to lower the effectiveness of cards such as Flame Tongue Totem, decrease incoming damage, and lower the chance on the Spell Power Totem roll. Flame Wrath Faceless is very hard to deal with on curve, especially if they already have board presence, so if you can, try to set up the board in a way that you can deal with it the turn it comes down. Turn 4 Kazakas into a turn 5 AoE potion is often key to turn the game around, so try not to take too much damage before it. If you have Reno in hand, Try to first remove their board before playing it, so they don't just put you back down to 15 health immediately. But make sure you aren't likely to die if you choose the board clear over Reno. Midrange Shaman, both the normal and Jade variant, require a similar playstyle to the aggro matchup. However, without most of their burst cards and the Flame Wrath Faceless, Reno Lock's weakness against aggro Shaman is removed, making this a favorite matchup. Each AoE card is very important, because the Shaman will try multiple times to rebuild the board, so try to use each one efficiently, especially if you have only one in your hand. Often the Shaman has multiple removals in hand, such as Storm, Hex or Bolt, so I generally prefer removing the board first instead of playing a minion to not make them able to use those cards efficiently. Late game you want to play around their burst with either a Ragnaros or Elikir with Flame Tongue, if they are a normal mid-range Shaman, if they are a mid-jade Shaman, be ready to handle their big jade columns, as those are generally their win condition. Against Warrior, you want to keep Reno, Kazakas, Mistress, Ooze, Doomsayer, Demon Wrath, and Shadow Bolt. Pirate Warrior is very similar to Agro Shaman in both the mulligan and the game plan. Try to get rid of every pirate if you can, to not allow the Bloodstone Cultist to upgrade a weapon, or Southsea Captain to buff the board. Also try not to be too greedy with Reno, as they most of the time run out of steam after. If they have a turn where you can either play a card or life tap, it's often better to play the card at the tap, unless you know you won't win with the cards you currently have. Every damage matters, so try to take as little damage as possible, especially when you don't have Reno in your hand. Dragon Warriors can have an explosive start, similar to Pirates, but after that they are reliant on their curve, and miss the burst and weapon damage of the Pirate Warrior. Their biggest threats are Fuffing Berserker, Dragonet Crusher, and Ragnaros, so try to always have an answer ready for those, as they can win games by themselves. Dragon Warriors also can't deal very well with big creatures, since they run at most one execute, Meaning cards like Twilight Rake or Giant will get the full value, and are even better if you can faceless them. Despite not playing Jiraxus, Control Warrior is still a very good matchup, due to the sheer value of Brank Kazakus combo. Try to life tap as much as possible to gain card advantage, and get to the two combos quickly. Also, try not to play too much into Brawl, and it should run out of removal in the end. Also, always save Brand for Kazakus, since you need to get as much value out of him as you can. Against Rogue, you keep Reno, Kazakus, Doomsayer, Demon Wrath, Shadow Bolt, Twilight Wake, and Mountain Giant. Miracle Rogue is a very hard matchup, because most of the minions are hard to deal with, and they have an incredible amount of burst potential. When facing a rogue, you usually want to have an answer for a big Van Cleave, as well as a concealed auctioneer questing adventurer. Expect them to have at least one sap, so then play a Mountain Giant or Twilight Wake if sap hurts too much, and you have another good play. 
And your Tourette can do wonders in this matchup, if you are able to deal 4 damage with either spells or minions, since everything rogues play has 4 or less health, and only a Tomb Pillager is usually a bad outcome. If you sense weakness one turn, such as turn 6 hero power pass, put the pressure on them to not give them time to draw their gadgets and auctioneer. Against Priest, you want to keep Reno, Kazakas, Doomsayer, Twilight Rake, and Mountain Giant. Dragon Priest is a favorite matchup. They basically want to fill the board with high elf minions, while also efficiently removing your side of the board. To counter this, hear your own strong minions that the Priest can't answer efficiently, play a big role, as well as strong AoE. The goal in this matchup is to survive and let the Priest run out of cards, since you have life tap and more value in your deck. They also don't have a lot of burst, so don't be too worried about falling low on health. Usually 6 is the maximum damage they can do with a combo of Brand plus Blackwing Corruptor. However, be careful if they use the Draconid operative and you still have Leroy or Power Overwhelming in your deck left. Against Warlock, you want to keep Reno, Kazakas, Twilight Drake and Mountain Giant. While the Reno Lock Mirror of course should be even, it is most likely favored due to a lot of lists not running the combo anymore, but are instead running a lot of anti-aggro cards. It is important to get tempo and pressure your opponent, but don't overcommit into big AoE cards. Play around the combo after Thorazen if you haven't seen a lot of tech cards that could indicate they don't run the combo. You can make your opponent play very defensively by setting up lethal if you have the combo, even if you don't have all the pieces in your hand. Try to save Alxtrasa until the after they have played their Reno to nullify its effect immediately. Against Mage, you keep Reno, Kazakas, Twilight Drake, and Mountain Giant. Reno Mage is a very similar deck to Reno Lock, but is more defensive in nature. This results in a matchup that is about even, although it does depend a bit on the decklist of the Mage, which can differ heavily. You want to pressure the Mage with your stronger minions, while also getting card advantage with Life Tap. You have to watch out for the burst, so if you don't feel safe, be free to use Reno. But be careful if the Alexstrasza can put you in a bad spot. Trading efficiently is usually more important than setting up an ice block proc, since you can expect them to have Reno. However, if you can, it is usually good to proc the ice block, because it allows your combo to finish them, and if they don't have Reno, the only real healing after that is Alexstrasza. An easy way to lose is if they generate several fireballs with Archmage Antonidas, so try to always have an answer to Antonidas if you are ahead. Combo isn't always useful in this matchup due to ice block, so don't be too afraid to use parts of the combo if you can make a great play with them such as Faces on a Giant or Drake. Against Druids, you mulligan for Reno, Kazakas, Doomsayer, Twilight Drake and Mountain Giant. Jade Druid is an even matchup, against which you want to try to build a board to pressure them, since Druids don't have a lot of tools to deal with the board efficiently. Jade Druids almost always win the late game, so you want to kill them relatively quickly before their Jade Columns get out of hand. Doomsayer is very good to use after a board clear, because it allows you to build the board the following turn and it forces the druid to answer it, instead of allowing them to develop their own board. If you don't get the board early, try to set up for a swing turn, with for example a big shadow flame or a 10 mana Kazakas potion. Paladin and Hunter are barely played on the ladder, so without the experience against them, I can't really give too solid advice. If you face a Paladin, expect them to be a Murloc Paladin, so mulligan for the usual cards against control and try to get to your combo as soon as possible. Also, the 10 mana polymorph potion deals very well with anything, so try to wait until you have both Bren and Kazakas to increase your chances on it. Against Hunter, I've played this year literally two games, so all I can say is that you probably expect them to be more of a mid-range deck. Be careful of them not doing too much face damage, as the direct damage spells and the hero power can easily finish the game. To finish this guide, I'd like to give you a few general gameplay tips. When to play Dirty Rat. Dirty Rat is a tricky card to play. Generally, you only want to play it if you can either handle the worst outcome possible, or that you do not mind what the worst outcome is. Against Control decks, you usually want to wait a bit with it, so they play all their unimportant minions, which means you'll have a higher chance of pulling an important one, such as Bran, Reno or Kazakus. Dirty Rat also combos well with Shadow Flame or MC Tech, and you get a free kill if you play it into your opponent's Doomsayer. What to pick with Kazakas and when to play it. What you want to do with Kazakas and his potions heavily depends on the matchup. For some slower matchups, you almost always want to keep Kazakas for Bran to get the double 10 mana potion. Generally, the Resurrects and the 8 8 Demon are the best choices if you need to be proactive, or combining one of these with a damage spell can often give a nice tempo swing. Also, try not to play Doomsayer in these matchups, unless you need the tempo, because it can give your opponent a free dirty red, 
and a resurrected Doomsayer can be pretty devastating. Versus aggressive decks, you generally want a 5 mana potion. If you play Kazakus Tune 4 and you are looking for either of the damage potions to remove minions from the board, or resurrect armor or draw, or even freeze, depending on the situation. When is your life total important? Well, you want to constantly think about your life total and how important it is during the game. Against aggro, it is uh, almost always very important, but against slower decks, you have to think about how low you can get safely. Generally, as long as you stay outside of your opponent's burst combo, such as Gromash plus Taskmaster for 12 damage, it is not very important. Also, if you have Reno in your hand, you don't have to be very careful about taking a little bit of damage, as long as you are no threat of dying. When do you want to play Emperor Thorazin? Well, Emperor Thorazin in aggressive matchups is often too slow, or just the only play you have on turn 6. In control matchups, you have to consider when to play it. When you play Emperor, you almost always want to have at least one combo piece in your hand to make the combo actually possible. Also, if you choose to run Jaraxxus, you often want to wait until you have him, since making Jaraxxus 8 mana will allow you to play him and spawn a 6 6 Inferno immediately. And that's it. Thank you for watching all the way through to the end. Let me know in the comments what I can improve, and also let me know for which deck you'd like to see a guide next. If you like my guide and want to see more, you can do that on my Twitch channel, where I stream daily. Link is in the description. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you at my next guide.